in honor of the premiere of Ruby Volume 4. I'm wearing my t-shirt. By the way, this is the day we've been waiting for. Sup everyone, I'm your female otaku and I am back to review Ruby once again. For those of you who don't know, I reviewed Volume 3 back when it was airing and I asked you guys if you wanted live reactions or reviews for Volume 4 and you all wanted reviews so here we are now. First things first, let's talk about that opening. I am disappointed in the song, but I do really like the visuals and like how they extended their opening as well. It's a lot longer than usual. My So far, my favorite opening will, will have to be uh, Volume 3 and then Volume 1, then I, got, I gotta give Volume 4 another listen to because it might end up being tied with Volume 2. But yeah, animation, I'm really um, interested in hearing everyone's opinions on what they think, the anim uh, um, how they feel about the animation. Like I said in my um, live reaction to the character short for Volume 4 that we got like on October 3rd, I really like the animation for the background. It looks fantastic. I love the animation for the background. I love the colors and stuff like that. Just great job. But when it comes to the characters, uh, it's gonna take some getting used to. I'll grow to like it. Right now I'm a little iffy with it, but I'll, I'll grow into it uh, quickly. Characters are still the same. The Jean comedy is still there. I'm just like, my boy Jean, I missed you, brother. I missed you so much, man. I just wanna take him a big ol' high five. Like, Sean, yes. And character um, designs with the clothes and stuff, I really like, you know, Ren's especially, just, Gonna need to see a little more of that, so that looks... That's 10 out of 10 effort right there. But let's talk about the more important stuff, and that is with the beginning of this episode, with that meeting. So the meeting with the humanoid Grim Queen, I don't believe we got her name just yet, so I'll just call her the humanoid Grim for now. And we see over in this land, we see how the Grim are created. They come out of this, you know, goop thing, and then they roam around all over the place. And during this meeting, we see that Cinder lost her eye, and her voice is very hoarse. So she just whispers what she wants to say to everybody to Emerald. And then Emerald tells everybody what's going on. And then we see four other guys, and I'm assuming that each person uh, represents or uh, goes over to whatever continent or kingdom that they have to do. Of course, you know, at the end of the, well, in the episode, we find out what their next mission is. But uh, if you haven't seen the short World of Remnant when they speak about each kingdoms, you have to. That's totally important, especially why, you know, uh, Ruby and the others are going over to, you know, which kingdom and the fact that they're going over to the uh, Haven Academy and also the fact that there's not just kingdoms, you also have other villages and things like that. Just, it's very important to watch the World of Remnant short if you haven't already. But anyway, so the humanoid Grim gives everyone their orders. And this one dude, I'm not gonna lie, I, I like him, okay? The crazy dude who was just laughing and stuff like that. I'm all like, you, I know you were inspired by a plethora of insane anime characters, so I like you automatically. <laughs> like, this guy's gonna be entertaining. He just wants to tear things apart. Dude's insane, oh, he's gonna be so much fun. And his mission is that he is going to capture Ruby alive and then bring Ruby over to the humanoid Grimm. And it seems that they like Adam and the White Fangs, so they're gonna keep uh, in touch with Adam and when we see actually in the opening, the opening foreshadows a lot of stuff with Yang, her troubles about losing an arm and stuff like what she's gonna do next and her vendetta towards Adam and then we also have Blake going at sea with Sun and this whole other crew and I'm, I'm gonna assume Neptune's in the area. We didn't see Neptune in the opening so I'm a little sad about that because Neptune is also one of my boys but uh, hopefully we'll get some screen time with him and also the humanoid Grimm mentioned that Cinder killed Ozpin. Now Cinder could be covering this up. Maybe she thought she killed him. Maybe he ran away or something like that. We don't really know, but I'm not going to believe Ozpin is dead. 
until I see a body. <laughs> That's how it's gonna be for now. My hopes in Aspen being alive and Pierre being alive is far greater. And a couple other things that I want to mention, we see this farm boy. So I wonder what his significance is going to be. And finally, we witnessed a ghost grim. Are we never gonna comment on that? Like this is like a, a grim that possessed inanimate objects. We're not gonna discuss this, like, no one's gonna explain this. This is the first time we've ever seen a, a ghost grim. Unless I'm going crazy, maybe we have seen it before, but I just don't remember. But as far as I'm concerned, this is our first time seeing a ghost grim. What the heck? Since when could they do this? Overall, I'm so, so happy that Ruby is back. The epic soundtrack, the lovable characters, animation's gonna grow on me real soon, and the plot is thickening. So let's go. Let me know your thoughts on this episode and what you're most hyped up for with Ruby Volume 4. I'm your female otaku, Sayonara.